Did you know that God is eagerly seeking a generation of glory carriers? Did you know that you are a candidate to release the presence of God every day in your life? Today on Life More Abundantly, we're going to teach you how to operate from the glory realm and see the supernatural. Don't touch that button. We'll be right back on Life More Abundantly. Greetings, friends. Welcome to Life More Abundantly. I'm your host, Dr. Keenan Bridges, and today I am excited to talk to you about one of my favorite subject matters. Yes, you know what it is, the glory of God. Oh, man, I'm telling you, God's glory is filling the earth like the waters cover the sea. I believe we are living in the greatest generation since the early church that's ever been on the earth. In fact, there are more believers on the earth right now than at any point in the history of the entire earth. Did you hear what I just said? There are more believers on the earth now than at any point in the history of the human race. I believe we are living in the greatest time of revival that the earth has ever seen. And the Bible says that the earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. You know, I believe that when we learn about the glory of God, you know, even when I talk about it now, some of you watching me, you're going to feel the presence of God, even as I talk about the glory. Because anytime you talk about the glory, the atmosphere begins to change. Things begin to shift because God loves when we glorify him. He loves to inhabit the praises of his people. Hallelujah. You know, when we talk about the glory, what is the glory? I want to read a scripture out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I just said? He said that he wants to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. In John chapter 14, Jesus told Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus is the express image of his person. So when we gaze at the face of Jesus, we see the glory of the Father revealed. What is the glory? What do I mean by the word glory? You know, in the Old Testament, the word glory comes from the root word kavod, kavod. And the word kavod actually has many meanings, but two of them are weighty and honor. Weighty and honor. You know, the the ancient rabbinical leaders would refer to the glory of God as the Shekinah glory or the Shekinah. And the reason why they called it that is because they said when they walked in the temple that the weight of the glory was so heavy that people would have to bow to their knees. It was a tangible mist that they could see. You see, you can feel the anointing, but you see the glory. And that's why Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. Now, I want to I give you some keys here. Because you got to understand something about God. In the Old Testament, God revealed himself as the unapproachable God. What do I mean by that? You couldn't come near him. In fact, you remember in the Old Testament when, when God told Moses to sanctify the people and that he would come down and speak to them himself. And the Bible says that if a beast came close to the mountain, they would thrust it through with a dart. They would kill the beast. The glory was so heavy. In fact, the Bible says that if the priests would go in unclean, they would die in the glory. Why? Because God's a holy God and the, his presence is so potent and so powerful. No flesh can glory in his presence. Through Jesus, however, we have an intimate relationship with God. You see, Jesus separated the veil. He went beyond the veil for us so that we could come after. You remember when Jesus died, the veil of the temple was rent. Now we have access directly to the Holy of Holies. Do you know what happened when Jesus ascended after his resurrection? The Bible says that, that he went before us as our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. What happened? Jesus went into the Holy of Holies in the heavenly realm and he put his own blood on the mercy seat, giving us 
everlasting access to the throne of God. And this is why Hebrews tells us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because of what Jesus did. Not only is the glory upon us now, or do we have access to the glory realm, but the glory lives inside of us. You know, the Bible says in 1 John, hereby we know that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. Understand that God's spirit lives in you. You see, not only are you accessing the glory of God, not only do you have access to his throne, but his spirit and his glory reside on the inside of you. You are a glory carrier. I'll talk about that in just a moment. You are a carrier of the glory of God. Oh man, I'm excited to hear. You see, there's a greater glory coming to the earth. I believe this with all of my heart. I believe that the time is coming and now is where the church is going to begin to rise up in power. Listen to this in intimacy, in authority and begin to release the atmosphere of heaven into the earth. You see, when we talk about the glory, we're talking about the atmosphere of heaven. You see, there's no sickness in heaven. So when the atmosphere of, of heaven is released in the earth, sickness has to go. There is no confusion in heaven so that when the atmosphere of heaven is released in the church, released in the schools, released in our culture, that confusion has to evacuate. You see, the glory of God is the manifest presence of God, the atmosphere of heaven. You see, when God shows up anywhere, he brings his presence with him. He brings the atmosphere. of All of heaven comes when he comes. I never forget the night I was in my room and the glory of God came into the room. It was so wonderful. It was so amazing. I stood in awe of his presence. I couldn't speak. Tears rolled down my face and he didn't have to say anything. His presence said it all. And I shook under the weight of the glory of God. You see, church, we need an awakening. We need the church to not just be a place of inspirational teaching. We need the church to not just be a place of motivational speaking. We need the church to not just be a place of fellowship, but it needs to be a house of prayer. It needs to be like Solomon in, in Chronicles. When the, when the sacrifice was made upon the altar, the Bible said that the glory filled the house and people couldn't even stand up. I'm telling you, the time is coming. Where we won't have to beg people to be saved, but the glory of God will be so manifest that people will say, what must we do to be saved? This is the generation that is arising in the earth. And you, my friend, are a glory carrier, whether you know it or not. God wants you to carry his glory to the nations. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 19, go into all the world and teach them to do what I've commanded. In other words, what did Jesus teach? He taught the kingdom of God. We're to go into the earth and release the kingdom but we do it by releasing the presence. That's why Jesus said, when you go into a town, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons and tell them that the kingdom has come to them. Today is your day to see the glory of God manifested in your life. The Bible says in Haggai chapter two, verse nine, it says the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Said the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace says the Lord of hosts. In other words, the latter glory will be greater than the former glory. You want to talk about revivals? You want to talk about awakenings? You want to talk about moves of God in the earth? You ain't seen nothing yet. The greater is not just coming. It's already here. Do you perceive it? Isaiah 43, behold, I do a new thing, says the Lord. It shall spring forth. Do you perceive it? Do you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers shall spring forth in the desert places. <laughs> we are entering into the season, beloved, of the greatest time of signs and wonders in the history of humanity. We are entering into the season of the greatest time of signs and wonders in the history of the human race. And you are the generation. If you're alive today, you are the generation that will release the glory of God on the earth.
You know, in just a moment, I'm going to teach you a little bit more about what the glory is and how to access it. But before I do that, I want to ask you out there this profound question. What is the glory of God? What is the glory of God? I look forward to hearing your answers. We'll be right back. Don't touch that button. We'll be right back on Life More Abundantly. If you ask me, the glory of God is all around us. Everybody's alive, the trees, you know, everything, everything that we use comes from the earth. Nothing comes from outer space. Everything was already here that we use, that we use umbrella trees, everything is here. So that's the glory of God within itself. The glory of God means that uh, no matter what I've done, he'll love me and care for me and always, uh, you know, look out for me, even if I'm destroying everything myself. Well, when I think about the glory of God, <laughs> it's indescribable. You can't contain it. You cannot even con con fathom it. And it's when the Father, His very presence falls upon you. When you say that, I imagine all white, probably so white, it'd probably blind me. <laughs> not, not just your belief in God, but what you believe you're getting from God. Wow, what awesome responses from you out there. I would love to hear your comment and your thoughts on the glory of God. You know, before the break, we were talking about the fact that we are living in this generation, which is the greatest generation since the history of the human race, since the beginning of time, because you are the generation that the Bible talks about in Haggai, chapter 2, verse 9, the latter house generation. And I'm telling you, we have to learn now, beloved, how to carry the atmosphere of heaven. What do I mean by being a glory carrier? I'm glad you asked. You see, it's time for the glory carriers to arise. I want to show you this. The word carrier is interesting. It's a person that carries, holds, or conveys something. A carrier is a person who holds or conveys something. When I talk about being a glory carrier, I'm talking about carrying, holding, and conveying the glory of God. You remember in John 14, where Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? You know, one of the things I've realized is that there is a generation of people that will never of their own volition and accord step foot in the church. When I moved to my city, our city was voted a few years ago the most unchurched city in the United States. When you go out on Sunday mornings, people are, are riding their bikes, walking their dogs, jogging down the sidewalk. They're, they're in their boats on the water, and they're having a good old time. In fact, one day I, we got out of church early, and I went to the mall. And I went to the mall, and I began to look, and the mall was packed. You couldn't find a parking space on Sunday morning. People were in their casual clothing, eating with their family. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He says, they are in church. I said, what do you mean? He said, this is their church. These are their gods. They worship the god Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Gucci, and Prada. And they bring their offering and they make their sacrifices to their gods on Sunday morning. And I realized something that the fact that the church is waiting for the world to come to them is unscriptural. When we look at the Bible, Acts chapter 2 says that the Holy Spirit came into the earth. There was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were seated. Listen to this. And the Bible says that there came a sound. Do you know that the earth will not respond until it hears a sound? Even in the beginning of creation, the Bible says, listen to this, the Bible says that when there was darkness, the Bible says the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, you know, when, when, when the glory comes down, listen to this, when the glory comes down, when the glory is released, rather, and begins to move over the atmosphere, listen, a sound has to come from that. And when the earth hears the sound, they will respond to the presence of God. You are a glory carrier. You have been called to carry, to hold, and to convey the presence of God to a generation that will never even know that they need God until they experience him. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, I, I remember, uh, and I love my wife because she's an awesome minister of the gospel. And let me tell you something, she carries such a presence that even the most hardened sinner, they just melt in front of her. 
Never forget a person that a person that we knew and they were so against God. They were so, I don't want to hear about that. I don't believe about God. I'm an agnostic, all this. And because the presence of God began to move through us, move through my wife and me, person comes up to me and says, I want to visit your church one day. You see, they're waiting on you. They're waiting on you. Stop waiting on them. Stop waiting on your loved ones to get saved. Stop waiting on your, your husband or your wife to get saved. Release the glory of God. Release the presence of God. Begin to release the atmosphere of heaven everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God has called you to convey his presence to his people. You see, the Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ. You know what that means? You are an embassy of God. You are an embassy of God. You know, when you go to an embassy, I had a friend of mine that went to an Iraqi embassy in Washington, D.C. And this man, even though he was a Muslim, he said, I want you guys to come and pray for my office. I want you to pray over my office. Can you imagine that? A Muslim from Iraq said, come and pray over my office. And when they walked in his office, they saw Persian rugs and they saw Middle Eastern artifacts. They said when they stepped in his office, it, it, it was as if they stepped into the Middle East. That's the whole point of an embassy. That's the whole point of an embassy. Because when you go into an embassy, you are stepping into the atmosphere of that country in a foreign land. That's right. If I go to a U.S. embassy in Asia, the moment my feet hit the soil of that embassy, I'm in America, even though I'm in a foreign land. You see, what am I saying to you? You carry the atmosphere of heaven everywhere you go so that, watch this, you give the earth a little piece of heaven everywhere you move. People should step into your presence and step into the atmosphere of heaven because they encountered you. We are called to be ambassadors of Christ. We carry the embassy of God with us everywhere we go. I want to give you a key, and I want you to write this down. The more conscious you are of the presence of God, the more qualified you are to host the atmosphere of heaven. The more conscious you are of the presence of God, the more qualified you are to host the atmosphere of heaven. You know, it was Bill Johnson who once says that the Holy Spirit is in every believer. And this is true. The Holy Spirit is in every believer, but he does not rest upon every believer. And the reason why is because the Holy Spirit will only go where he is hosted and he is honored. Did you know that one of the words for glory is the word kavod, which is honor? Listen to me very carefully. An atmosphere of dishonor will distinguish the presence of God. Because God, listen to this, will only go where he is honored. Where there is no honor, there is no glory. And this is why the church in America has to wake up. We have to imbibe a culture of honor so that we can properly host the presence of God. He only goes where he's honored. Even Jesus, when he went to Nazareth and they dishonored him, they held him as common. They were full of unbelief. They held him as, oh, that's just Mary's son. And that's, oh, that's just, oh, yeah, we know your cousins and your brothers. And we know you, Jesus. And, you, and he couldn't do any miracles there. The same is true. What we're doing when we dishonor God and we dishonor his people, his leaders, when we dishonor each other, when we dishonor those in leadership, we are releasing an atmosphere of dishonor, which is the antithesis of the glory of God. God will only manifest himself where he is honored and properly hosted. Are you going to be a good host? Can God rest upon you, my friend? Can you be entrusted with the atmosphere of heaven? Are you sensitive to God's presence? Are you someone who can properly reflect the culture of heaven? Can people look at you and see the kind of attitude and the kind of environment internally and externally that represents the kingdom that you are a part of? It's time, beloved. It's time. It's time for us to do what Jesus said on earth as it is in heaven. The atmosphere of heaven manifesting through us. Glory to God. The atmosphere of heaven manifesting in and through us. You know, I don't know about you, but one of the things I've seen 
is that when we learn to host the presence of God, and we, when we learn how to be a carrier of the glory, things happen. Miracles happen. I'm telling you right now, I've seen miracles happen. I was in a meeting, and a woman that was blind from birth, are you hearing what I'm telling you? Blind from birth, in the atmosphere of the glory, her eyes popped, and she received her sight. I've seen people in the glory realm get out of wheelchairs. I've seen people, we were in a meeting, and the glory came down, and a woman that shattered bones in her body and had metal all in her body, the metal was turned into bone. See, nothing is impossible in his presence. Nothing is impossible. There's somebody watching right now, you need a new body part. Come on, just receive it from the glory realm. Some of you need a dental miracle right now. Receive it from the glory realm. Some of you need, listen, that the metal in your body uh, 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 it's, it's, it's been hindering you. Maybe you had a hip replacement, a knee replacement. I release the glory right now so that whatever is in your body that shouldn't be would evacuate and that you would, see, you would receive a supernatural transplant of everything that you need. Before you go, beloved, don't touch that dial because I want to pray with you and release the glory of God so that you can be a glory carrier to your generation. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Life More Abundantly. And now, back to Life More Abundantly. Welcome back, friends. You know, even now I feel the presence of God. And I'm telling you, maybe you in your home right now, you're feeling the presence of God because there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Time is not a barrier in the realm of the spirit. No matter where you are, you can invite his presence in right now. Let me tell you something. The greater the acknowledgement, the greater the access. And the, and the greater the access, the greater the manifestation. You see, when you learn how to steward, you see, whatever you appreciate, appreciates. Say that one more time. Whatever you appreciate, whatever you value, appreciates, increases in value. And if you will learn to be a good host, just say right now with me, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. I welcome you to come and to manifest yourself. Oh, Father, let the same glory that was in the beginning. The Bible says in John chapter 17, Lord, I pray that they may be one, that the glory that was on us would be upon them. God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for a release of the glory of God. I thank you for a stirring and a manifestation of your presence, that chaos has to be gone. Confusion is broken. That sickness and disease are released in your presence. Oh, God, we praise you right now. Just stretch your hands there, wherever you are. As long as you're not driving, stretch your hands. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for a fresh manifestation and impartation of your presence, your power, and your glory in their lives. In Jesus' name. Beloved, if you prayed that prayer, listen, you ought to, if you haven't done it, make Jesus your Lord. Invite him into your heart. Make him your Lord so that you can live for him. Beloved, this is your moment to be a glory carrier. God bless you. In Jesus' name. And until next time, shalom and God bless.